the Portsmouth Naval Base, Britain prepares for the worst in the Suez Crisis. Part of her mothball fleet, idle since World War II, is hastily made ready for action. President Nasser continues to defy the Western powers on his seizure of the canal and seeks the support of Russia and the Arab League countries. The aircraft carrier Theseus is the first to leave for the Mediterranean, to be quickly followed by the carriers Bulwark and Ocean. Preparations are also made to ferry 20,000 reservists to the area if necessary. Meanwhile, a French fleet sails from Toulon as diplomats desperately seek a conference that will head off war. A B-50 bomber carries the rocket plane high aloft over Muroc Dry Lake, California for its speed run with a full fuel load. Lieutenant Colonel Frank Everest lowers himself into the cockpit of the Bell X-2, which is released from the bomber to begin its history-making flight. Rocket engines roaring, the test vehicle for spaceships of the future, reaches the unheard-of speed of 1,900 miles per hour. That's faster than a cannon shell. Special metals and tempered glass keep pilot and plane from burning up during the meteoric plunge through space. Skids enable Colonel Everest to set her down safely on the desert after having flown faster than any man in history. At the Air Force Association convention in New Orleans, Gil Rob Wilson announces news of the flight and presents the veteran Air Force test pilot as guest of honor of the convention. Men like Colonel Everest, blazing through sound barriers and now heat barriers, push back the frontiers of time and open up broad new avenues for man's conquest of outer space. At Argonne National Laboratory, supervoltage electron beam generators capable of hurling a searing destructive storm of radiation are turned to the peaceful aim of food preservation. Radiation processing promises to enable the storage of fresh meats, vegetables, and other foods indefinitely without refrigeration. Test samples are irradiated under 55,000 gallons of water that shields observers from stray radiation. Test screens record the exact amount of gamma radiation received by each sample. Some meats, including pork, have shown no change in appearance or taste after nine months at room temperature. The research shown in these Defense Department films is still in the experimental stage, but it seems only a matter of time until the process is perfected. All aboard the Animal Express for a trip through the 122-acre Detroit Zoo. This miniature railroad is one of the latest features of the zoo, one of the country's biggest and most progressive, which boasts such talented residents as a trustee by the name of Julius, regular conductor on this line. Bruin thinks they should bear down on this monkey business. While Julius has the run of the place, the bears do their panhandling at a distance. A wide moat separates them from visitors, which may be a good thing for the bears, if you think a balanced diet's important. But they're gluttons, not for punishment, just plain gluttons, with an appetite matched by the ostrich who combines natural timidity with hunger to turn feeding time into a game of hide-and-seek. Julius calls time on a day of fun at the zoo. All aboard for home. After four centuries of watchmaking, the Swiss exhibit the final expression of their craft in an exhibit at the Hotel Pierre in New York. This is a graphic view of watch evolution. For Mr. and Mrs., watches styled alike. And for Le Bourvardier, a watch to match links, shirt, and tie. Watches for cocktail time, dinner, and streetwear. These days, she can get engaged with a watch. An exquisite example of microscopic watchmaking, time on her hands. And for a real decor, this tassel watch, which can be worn as a pin-up, at the belt, or carried in the purse. A companion piece is the pin watch, in this case a royal coach made of gems and gold filigree. Most ingenious is the $20 gold piece, which snaps up and brings the face up flat. All in all, the watch has come a long way since the 10-pounders carried by a servant. Today it serves the cause of romance and adornment, and with advanced techniques becomes a jealous split-second guardian of time. Seattle's annual Seafair celebration gets off to a flying start at Green Lake. 
where a dive by Alyssa Lassie with lovely lines is in startling contrast to what went before, and especially to what follows. Sleek lines take a beating as the diving maniacs put on a show. Beauty goes by the board, and comedy is the order of the day when the merry madcaps of Al Sheehan's Aqua Follies hit the drink. Say goodbye to his new pants. So long. You've got to be good to make it look that bad. Timber! He doesn't have water on the brain. Clowning is serious business, and it wouldn't be drawing the long bow to state that it takes more than love to conquer all. Hey, Cupid? For a comedy diver, it takes skill and courage. The day's news has him sunk. <laughs>